Well, welcome back everybody. And in this part of the Beta Flight Basics tutorial, we're going to talk about the big subject on these flight controllers, and that's how to flash them. Now, from the feedback I got, it seems that flashing the firmware on a flight controller is something that fills a lot of people with absolute dread. The sort of fear is that, okay, I've got something that flies, maybe it doesn't fly very well, but what if, what if I screw something up? What if I break it? What if it then doesn't fly like it did before and it's even worse? All these uh, sort of panics and worries that people have and they end up not doing anything and just carrying on with a bad flying quad. <clears throat> the big news to really take from this is you can't um, brick a flight controller. You can't destroy the bootloader which is held in ROM. You can completely corrupt and screw up the firmware on it and when you went to try and fly it just wouldn't boot but you can put it into a situation where it will reload the firmware using that bootloader held in the ROM so the thing is not to worry you can't break well, you can break it hit it with a hammer but you can't break it by flashing it incorrectly the other thing to take account of this is not like an iPhone it's not that you can't go backwards so you can be on this firmware and you can think okay it flies okay but what happens if I move to the new firmware and it's not as good? Then you move back again. You can go up, you can go down, and you can recover all the settings you had. Not a problem. It should just go back and forth. So I am going to cover the situation in if you get, for some reason, a corrupt um, firmware or basically your board isn't talking to you and you need to know how to recover that. I have to say, though, in the vast majority, like 99% of cases, this is a two-minute job. You plug it in, you click flash, and it just happens. But let's go through the normal thing, and let's go through how to recover, or what happens if you've got a non-working flight controller. So let's get going, and for the benefit of being able to handle something easier, I'm gonna use this little NA6 to do this first part. So we've opened beta flight here, and we're gonna plug this in as per normal, up it boots. So if we connect in, and using the CLI, as we did last time, type version, we will see that we're running the Betaflight NASE variant um, at 2.9.0 version, which is reasonably old. Although I'd always say, if there's nothing specific that you want out of the next version, then there's no reason to fly it. If your quad's flying brilliantly, then you know don't touch it, it's great. But if you want to, if there's a certain feature that you want or you think it's going to help you uh, get smoother, then this is the reason to upgrade. And past about beta flight version 3 was when there was a lot of quite big upgrades, which really helped a lot. Now, one thing um, we want to do with this, because this has been set up, we've got serial RX there, so we've done some changes here. We've got it set up for S bus, we've done some slight tuning. We've got our mode set up. If we go ahead and flash a new firmware, we will lose all of that. Uh, but it's easy to do this. All we need to do is click on backup. And then it will prompt to save it. And we're going to call it, so it's useful. We'll call it the NAS290. Save that. Next thing we do is we disconnect from the configurator because the flashing is a different thing and we don't want an active connection and now we choose our firmware now these are all the variants of beta flight firmware for different boards basically whatever your version um, of the firmware came out when you type version this is what you need to select so um, in the previous video I used an SB Racing F3 board and, and there it is we're gonna have nays and unless you've got a specific reason to go with a very specific version go with the latest stable. Stable means it's good and tested. There, there are lots of experimental versions you don't want to mess with, uh, but 317 stable is the latest, greatest, and it will have most of the features. So ignore all of this, because for normal flashing we don't need it. Go down to load firmware. What this will do is pull the uh, binary uh, firmware file down from the GitHub repository. It's got some uh, release notes here, which is quite handy. And then we're just going to click on Flash Firmware. And lo and behold, there it goes and flashes. Twiddle our thumbs a bit. And a 
this done. And that is should be it in 99% of the cases. We'll deal with the not working case in a second. But let's connect here again. Um, and you see, if we wiggle it around, it's all good still. But you will see that our ports and our configurations changed. This has gone back to PPM. Our modes have disappeared. Oh no, we've lost all our settings. Panic not. So if we go to restore now, and there's our NAS290. Let's restore that. And now if we look, our ports are back. Our configuration configurations back to S bus. We've got our modes back. We're all good. We can then take this off and fly it again. Easy, wasn't it? Nothing to worry about at all. Okay, so now let's deal with what happens if it goes wrong. Now, this could be that something's gone wrong while flashing, like what if you had a power fail halfway through or the cable came out or just something went wrong? What would happen? Now, often it's a case of, if you notice when we plug the power in here, we get little flashing lights. Here is a, a bad board. If I plug this one in, no flashing, just a blue light. Now, all boards aren't the same, but a steady single light with no flashing often is the case of something is wrong. Um, on this one, there's a, there's a hardware failure. Um, but on others, this is often a case of I, I've unable to load the firmware and it's like, pff, I'm stuck. I, I can't talk to anything at that point. As it happens, I just happen to have a quad that won't talk very well. So let's get that one and we'll look at what happens when we try and flash the firmware. Okay, so here is my little 250 frame running my failed Flycolor 390 uh, ESC still work. But who'd have thought I got such uh, longevity from a failed review? Anyway, if we plug this in, you will see it's normal startup. And if we go into beta flight, have a connect here. We should see that it's set up, it responds. And if we go into the CLI and check the version, we are running SP Racing F3 301. Now let's say that we've decided we need the latest and greatest because there's something we wanted. So normal routine, we'll go to the firmware flasher, we'll choose the SP Racing F3, we'll choose the latest firmware, 317, load firmware online, there's your release notes, let's say flash to firmware. Oh, no response from the bootloader, programming failed. Oh no, it's broken. So it's not broken, at this point it would still connect. But you'd have the same response from something that got corrupted and wouldn't talk to you. Basically the bootloader's not, not happy. Why quite it happens with this one where it won't talk? Don't know, but this is the situation. So in this case, what do we do? In all these various different types of flight controllers, if you look carefully on these, and I will cut to a close-up that I've yet to do, but you will see there are boot pins. On these ones, they're regular pins. On this one, they are slightly smaller. What you can do with the boot pin is force it into loading this bootloader it's got in ROM, which, if something's gone wrong, will help it talk again. So how do you do that? First off, let me show you a close-up of what happens when you power on with a normal boot. On this particular one, you get this red light and this green light to show something's going on. To boot um, from the bootloader, you will need basically a piece of metal. I've got this little uh, breadboard cable. And what I do with the board powered off, short the boot pins together. That is to say I connect one to the other. Now on some flight controllers, you have a little button and that makes it really easy. And when I plug in like this, you'll see all we have is this red light. At that point, I can get rid of the cable. Now, going back up to what we do here, we use the no reboot, full, full chip arrays, and manual board rate. Now, some people often use the flash on connect, and the idea there is, because this takes several pairs of hands almost to try and do it, what you want it to do is be able to just flash it whilst you're holding all the stuff together. It doesn't seem to work very well on my Mac, but I don't really have a problem getting it into bootloader mode um, and then letting it go, clicking the buttons. So we've got those bits done. 
we've got the firmware loaded, let's try flashing it now. And off it goes. I have to say it seems a mite bit slower than doing the normal thing and I think that's because it's doing the full arrays of the chip. I'm speeding this up because the elapsed time is a little bit long. And that's it, program is successful so we should now be able to say connect. Double check our version on the CLI. Yep, 317. And you'll see we've got, once again with a full chip arrayed, obviously everything's not knocked out but um, I saved everything before then so all I have to do is reload them and they're back in play that's normal that will cover just about every situation you will get into with flashing and if you want to go backwards you just load the previous firmware you can still uh, generally save and restore your settings there is one caveat and there's some weird inner workings of if you're programming stuff on the CLI, apparently some of those I would call inner settings don't save in the normal saves. But if you are really going in and doing that, you will probably know what you're doing anyway and be able to do it again. There is one other further way of flashing. I was going to cover it in this one and I thought, no, it's, it's so uh, rare to happen that I'm not going to cover it. If people want me to, if you've tried all these and it's not happening, then I will do it. It's, it's using this software from ST Electronics called um, ST Flash, I think, which is a way of getting the raw hex file and flashing it in a slightly different way. And I've done it once before and it works, but really it shouldn't be needed. Anyway, that is flashing. Hopefully a little bit less scary. Um, you can't break it. That is the thing. Don't panic. You cannot brick these flight controllers. You can smash them up with a hammer or crashes, but you can't break them from doing this. That's the, that's the key to remember, and you can always get your stuff back. I'll be back next time, and we'll start on the tabs, which I'll be covering the ports tab. Isn't that exciting? See you next time.